So he wake up one morning, he said, okay, I've got it all, but I need something. Someone. Someone. I've got it all, but uh, I'm not satisfied. Yes. And what's missing? Eric? <laughs> yes. That is the best answer. If I am perfect, but I want you in my life, what am I missing? You. Everything else I have. You gave us eyes to look inside. Instead we envy, full of pride. Okay, hello, Rabbi Menis. First of all, I want to thank you for the invitation. I'm going to introduce myself. Three decades ago, when I just started my career as an actor, I also began my spiritual journey. My spiritual journey seeking God. <laughs> uh, my journey began, first of all, by understanding the meaning of fate. I did that through two documentary films that I produced about Tzadikim. The first one was about Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. It was 20 years ago uh, in Lagba Omer. My crew and I stayed a week in uh, Miron Mountains, uh, his burial place, of course. The second movie I produced was about the Tzadik Rabbi Israel Abu Hatzera, also known by the Moroccan name Baba Sali, the praying father. Even as a little child, I must confess, I had some doubts. They always came in time that I was exploring, or God forbid, times that uh, everything seems to be okay. And like always, they would disappear when there were troubles. The reason for their disappearance was simply because I wanted to make the trouble disappear, so I would find myself doing what I'm casually doing, praying consciously to God to make the trouble go away. During the corona period, when I uh, was old and wise enough, at least that was, um, that was the feeling back then. I recorded a song uh, in English named Say a Prayer. So, so with your permission, I will quote a few sentences from, from the song. You gave us eyes to look inside. In, instead, we envy full of pride. You gave us mouth to bless and pray. We choose to lie. Curse and betray. Our freedom slowly dissipate. They all tell us to be patient. Wait. But today we pray. Bring us hope. That through the darkness we stay walk. We must stay strong. We must stand tall. And sing as one. Hallelujah. Several years ago. I, I was exposed randomly on YouTube to your lectures. I admit that for a long time, years, I was looking for a spiritual guide who would help me to understand the meaning of being Jewish without dealing with Judaism through fear. I just fi finished reading your book, I Didn't Have to Be Burned. Uh, Lobby Kashti Lavola Olam. I must say it's a blessed book and thank you for that. It's amazing. So uh, it's it's a great honor to be here and ask the, your, the question face to face. So allow me to start by asking, in your opinion, why God creates us with doubts if in the time of trouble he is literally forcing us to be closer to him. Why do we, we need all those doubts? Because if we will be honest for a second, in the end, we are all great believers. So in your opinion, we are Jewish. 
why we need this virus named doubts? That is a very good question. <laughs> we don't need doubts. But we've got them. Yeah, they're... but a doubt doesn't go anywhere. If you have a question, hopefully you'll get an answer. If you have a doubt, what are you going to do with it? Where does it go? What does it want? What does a doubt want? To make you explore more and more. Like a question. Yeah. Right? A question also makes you want an answer. Yeah. But what does a doubt do? See, we all have emuna. We are ma'aminim b'nei ma'aminim. Mm -hmm. But there's a problem with emuna. It's not organic. It's not... You can't touch it. It's a little too spiritual. Yeah. Doubt means I want it solid and real. Yeah. I'm not looking for an answer. If you have a question, you look for an answer. When you have these doubts, you're looking for reality. Mm. There is a God someplace... He is something, I'm not sure, except when I'm in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm in trouble, I'm sure I need a God. Yeah. Right? The rest of the time, I, I believe, but what does that have to do with everyday life? So emuna is a little bit heavenly. Yeah. It's not, it's not olam hazeh. Doubt means... I need it to be more concrete. I need it to be more mamashi. So how do you make it more real? That's what doubt wants. I don't want an answer. I want reality. Yeah. I want it to be real. Like miracles. Miracles are great. Yeah. But you can't live on miracles. No. So you want what happens in a miracle to happen naturally. Then you know that life is good. But if you need a miracle, it means life is not so good. Mm -hmm. But it'll get fixed by a miracle. Yeah. The same thing with Emunah. I don't, I don't live my life godly. God is not a part of my every day. It right? should be. It should be, right. Not only when I need him. Maybe sometimes when he needs me. That's what the doubt is objecting to. Why is he only a belief? Why isn't he the reality of life? Why is there a distance between what I believe and what I am? Explaining this question. It's like people say, I decided to do something, but I knew it was wrong. <laughs> Something told me it was wrong. My better judgment mm. told me not to do it. I did it anyway. I did it anyway. Why is your better judgment not your reality? Why isn't your better judgment your normal self? No, it's my better judgment. Mm. So why can't it be every day? Mm. Bring it down and make your better judgment your only judgment. Wow. Why can't you be as smart as you are? <laughs> That's a good question. That's where the doubt is. Okay, fine, I believe, but I, I can't... Touch it. That's doubt. It's not a question. It's a suffix. If to be more specific, you know, the doubts disappears when you are in trouble. Mm -hmm. Odioter, when the trouble seems like to be unsolved and nothing will solve it, yeah. then does the opposite, the opposite of doubt. What is the opposite of doubt? Is the opposite of doubt is a muna? Or the opposite of doubt is to know. 
surely. I can see you sitting here. And when the doubt disappears, I can see Akitrelik sit here. Sit here. It happens. It happens even, even if you are no reli not religious. Yes, yes of course. Yeah. No, if you have to be religious, then something is wrong. Yeah. Only if you're religious it makes sense, then it doesn't really make sense. So there is this idea of nikarim divrei emet. When you hear a truth, you know it's true. Not you believe it's true. Why can't the Judaism, the Dat, the Torah, can be something not so philosophic, not so lachforba, something that I can use even, even if I am not religious? Because it seems like to be holding the Torah, you need to be Talmud Torah. Why? It seems like if you are Chiloni, I'm coming from Israel, I'm not such a religious man. Okay, I'm praying in the morning, I'm keeping Shabbat. I love the Masoret. I love Tzadikim. But I'm not so religious as you are. He's a great beard, Yamaka. Mm. I'm not a Talmud Yeshiva. Mm. I'm an actor. I'm a comedian. I, I like. <laughs> I hear you're a good comedian. <laughs> I like the show business, but there again, I'm a Jewish. I love the Judaism. I love to be Jewish. I love my Masoret. I love my Chagim. So I gotta tell you the story. I was in Eretz Yisrael. We were having a session with um, uh, Natalie Dadon. Yeah. She invited four hundred women. Yeah. In the end, one woman raised her hand and she said, you know, I want to be Shomer Mitzvot, <laughs> but I'm Chiloni. So what should I do? Do I have to stop being Chiloni? I said, Chas Vishalom. Don't stop being Chiloni. Just do all the mitzvot that you can. Yeah. She was very happy. Yeah. But one of the other women there got very upset. How can you say bichiloni? Bichiloni. What does chiloni mean? Chiloni means you eat chazir? No, no, of course not. Chiloni means you, uh, you're pro-Palestinian? No. What does chiloni mean? Chiloni means... Uh... If you're asking people in Israel, what is the meaning of you being Chiloni? He will tell you, I'm not keeping Shabbat. I'm driving to see Kadurega. I'm watching Tochniyo Televizia in after the Kiddush. But I'm, I'm, go, I'm going to synagogue in Yom Shishi. Yes. And I'm doing Kiddush. Yeah. And I'm going to the Tzaddik every two months. That's if you're from Morocco. Yeah. <laughs> But if a woman says, I want to do mitzvot, yeah. but be chiloni. What does it mean? Then what does it mean? What does it mean? If you're keeping Shabbat and you're keeping kasher, yeah. but you're still chiloni, what does that mean? That's what they're trying to say. In Israel, the meaning of chiloni is not to be dati, not to be a religious. <laughs> but, but be shomer mitzvot. We are all shomre mitzvot. Okay, so here's a question. Can you be Shomer Mitzvot and not Dati? Yes, you can. From my opinion, of course, do what, what you can. I'm doing what I can. And if you can a lot, and you're keeping all the mitzvot, I know why you're, you're Dati? I know why you're going to. So answer this question. If you're doing all the mitzvot, you are Dati? No. You're a Jew. You're a Jew. So you just make more mitzvot than I am. Than I do. Who's counting? Who's counting? 
I think that chiloni means subconsciously. Mm-hmm. Chiloni means can I do the mitzvot because I want to, or do I have to do the mitzvot because I'm told to? Mm. In other words, is it a community in, that make imposed? me do the mitzvot? Yeah, or can I do it because I want? I yeah. The answer is if you do it because you want, then then it's the real thing. That's the best way. But you know, as a chiloni, maybe now it's better, but as a chiloni, when I was younger, I did the mitzvot just when I felt I must do it. Must. Must. Because if not... Something very bad. Oh. That is the problem with Judaism. Can you meet the Judaism without dealing with fear? Always have a dot. If you will do, don't do that, you're going, something terrible going to happen. Yes. I don't like this method at all. Nothing is scary in Judaism. Oh, but it's called Haredi. Yes, <laughs> a lot of haradot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not talk about it because it's in my question. Can can we move to the second question? Okay. So, oh, it is. So I want to introduce you, unfortunately, to my best friends, friends who have been accompanying me since infancy. Anxieties. Mm. <laughs> I've been having them like forever. I've been trying to get rid of them all my life by taking all kinds of pills. More than once I try to drown them with a good scotch. <laughs> I've been trying to deal with them all my life. You know what? They never left. <laughs> so I'm a minute from 50. I'm smelling the end because I have it. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Haradot. Mm-hmm. All my friends call me, calling me Arik the Hipochonda, you know. Every headache for me is like the end. It took me a long, a long time to understand that without the anxieties, it might be easier to, to accomplish things. And maybe it would have been easier to deal with uh, with problem without them. But also I understand that without the anxieties, I would have never got closer to my creator. Because in fact, there's a lot of problems we approach, encounter in real life that prayers is absolutely the last resort. So, dear Rabbi Menes, what is the deal with anxieties? But not just anxieties, anxieties of Jewish. Because we got them more. Oh, yeah. And, and it's closely related to doubts. Yeah. Because doubts bring anxiety. Yeah. Uncertainty, suffolk, takes all the simcha and all the confidence out of life. Mm-hmm. So one very important thing that nobody talks about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have to go to for psychology and they'll figure out that you had a difficult childhood and you were once uh, forgotten in the store and you were alone and you're... That's all very true, but it doesn't answer the question. There's a certain truth and a reality. Who are you really? You can't make up an answer. What you are really is real. Mm -hmm. If I don't know who I am really, I'm insecure. If I don't know myself, not because I don't know what's going to be tomorrow, I'm afraid of the future, I'm afraid of the unknown, but those are childish. You outgrow that. What you don't outgrow is, I don't know who I am. Yeah. So, what is the meaning to know who you are? 
That's why the Rebbe always told people, if you're not a healthy Jew, then you're not healthy. Because you are a Jew. What is the so meaning of a healthy Jew? Uh, that's why the act of the mitzvah, the actual act of the mitzvah, I'm a Jew, this is what I do. That, that makes it solid. It makes your identity real. You put a mezuzah on your door, you become real. Yeah. You put on tefillin in the morning, you become real. You become real meaning you become yourself. I am who I am. But if you're thinking I'm no different from a non-Jew, then you don't know who you are. If you don't know who you are, you become anxious. So to solve that anxiety, like you say, the, the Jewish anxiety. Yeah. Why do we have a Jewish anxiety? We have a lot of reasons. Because of a bad history? Because bad history, because bad of the future. Yeah. That's not anxiety, that's fear. I know exactly what I'm afraid of. Yeah. Hamas. Yeah. <laughs> That's not anxiety. Anxiety, again, is like it's a vague, you don't know exactly what... What it is. Yeah. You don't know what you're afraid of. Yeah. You don't know what, what the enemy is. Yeah. If you know who the enemy is, so fight him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah uh, anxieties and doubts are from the same family. Yeah. Cousins. Yeah. So, you make a Jew feel comfortable being a Jew, you've cured him. It's pikoach nefesh. That's nice. So when the Rebbe started the mitzvah, yeah, stop a guy in the street and say, excuse me, are you Jewish? Would you like to put on tefillin? Even if he doesn't put on the tefillin, you just changed his life. Because you asked him, are you Jewish? Now he has to think about it. Now he can't sleep for a week. Of course I'm Jewish. I don't do too many Jewish things, but I am Jewish. So maybe I should do some Jewish things. You've, ch you've, you've disturbed his life. All you did was say, are you Jew? We are so Jewish that if we ignore it, we're not healthy. We cannot reg recognize ourselves. Yeah. So it's like standing on one foot the whole time. Yeah. Of course you're anxious. You're out of balance. There's, there's a few problems because I will always talk. We, we are the Jewish people. Not mo most of us, but Chelek. We are, know that we are Jewish but we are ignoring it. Mm. We think that it's comfortable to ignore it. Yeah. I think it's a great problem now in Israel. We are ignoring our Zeut. Mm -hmm. Which a good example for that is, if a man ignores the fact that he's male, or a woman ignores the fact that she's female. The result is, we don't know what a woman is. Yeah. What's a woman? A woman who doesn't know what a woman is, this is healthy? There's such anxiety. Yeah. It leads to suicide. So we've got doubts, anxieties, ignoring, a and lot of all, bad things. And it's all unnecessary. Unnecessary, yeah. It's not hard for a woman to be a woman. It's not hard for a man to be a man. It's not hard for a Jew to be a Jew. It's natural. To be a Jew, it's to must understand you need to do things. Am I right? Yes. If you're a Jew, you want to think like a Jew. You want to feel like a Jew. You want to look like a Jew. 
You want to act like a Jew. Then you're a complete human being. But we must do a lot of things to make ourselves be complete knowing that we are Jew, we must do a lot of things. But then if again... If you want to be super Jew. If you want to... <laughs> like if you want to be Superman, right, then you have to be macho and you have to... You don't have to be Superman. Yeah. Be a man. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever, to whatever degree. Yeah. But, but not out of touch with your, your manhood. Mm -hmm. So, but, you know, to, to the Rebbe, if you do one mitzvah, you're solid. You're solid. Because for that moment, for that act, then you're a man. You light Shabbos candles, you're a Jewish woman. For that minute. Hopefully, you have more such minutes. Yeah. So, how much do you have to do? The more, the better. Until your recognition will be complete? Until you feel completely solid in yourself. Mm -hmm. And then it starts having an effect on other people. Mm -hmm. They look at you and say, well, 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 what are you so happy about? How come, mm -hmm. you're, so, how come you're so calm? Yeah. Where is your anxiety? Yeah. You can tell immediately a person without anxiety. Give me your pills. Mm -hmm. What are you taking? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I want to tell you uh, about my mother. God rest her soul. My mother uh, left seven years ago. She had a great emunat chachamim. Bemet. She had a tremendous faith in tzaddikim. Specifically in the Moroccan ones. Every morning, she had a ritual of lighting candles for every one of each of them. She would talk to them with absolute certainty that they are all listening, maybe answering. Tzaddikim in uh, Judaism are known as connecting lines or if you want uh, mediators between us to God, isn't it? The Rebbe, even though he wore a great tzaddik, many believe that the Rebbe is, is the Mashiach ben Dovid. So I'm anxious hearing from you about the Rebbe. Will you tell me? Every, every big tzaddik is in this world to inspire those who are not tzaddikim, yeah. right? They don't need to be here for themselves. They are neshamot kwaliot. They're here for us, not for themselves. How, how are they here for us? When you see a tzaddik, godliness becomes real. Mm. Here's a human being yeah. And he is really holy. So holiness is not in the, the, in the Shemaim. It's real. Yeah. It's, it's humanly possible. That's what makes God real, makes the Torah real, makes the mitzvah real, makes the Chag real. Yeah. Holy is real. We live in a world where nothing is holy. Israel is holy. For those who recognize it. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm saying it because we, we love tzaddikim in Israel. We love going to Miron. We love going to Netivot to yes, see the Babatani. Tzaddikim Babatali. in Morocco were also real. And now that it's almost proven, Mordechai and Esther were not in that. In, in Iran. And they were, and they were real. Yeah. They were holy. And they yeah. Were, so, the Rebbe made God real. Yes. Everybody believes, everybody did, everybody practices, everybody is religious. 
but it didn't fit. You're religious in a very ungodly world, which means you're not part of this world when you're religious. You're, you're a different world, the religious world. You live in books, you live in heaven, you, you're not part of this world. The Rebbe said, what do you mean? Of course we're part of this world. Mm. You teach Tanya on the radio, mm. and you make a Fabrengen on the television, mm. and you go out in the streets with the Tvilin, not into a synagogue, into the streets. That's great. Why are you separating the mitzvah and God from the real world? It's the same. The real world exists for holiness. He made it real. A couple of weeks ago, they had 3,000 teenagers in Times Square, mm -hmm. Manhattan, yeah. to make Havdalah after Shabbat. Wow. They made Havdalah, they made candle, everybody made the bracha, and they showed it on the huge screens. What do you mean we're not? This is reality. This is the world as it's supposed to be. In other words, mitzvot and Torah are not supposed to take you to Shamayim. They're supposed to bring God down to earth. That's amazing. That's Chabad. That's amazing. So is the Rebbe Mashiach. Don't play games. Do you see a Mashiach? People are getting killed every day in yeah. Israel. So your question is, who's Mashiach? My question is, where's Mashiach? Where's Mashiach? Where? This is the other question. Because we need Mashiach. He can be, he, he, he can come in a Cadillac <laughs> or in Hamol. Make no difference. Just come already because we need you. <laughs> yeah. So what? What, this whole debate of who Mashiach, first show me where is Mashiach. First, get us out of this problem. What will it take to bring Mashiach? Why is he not here? So, God forbid, chas v'shalom, to say that we don't deserve Mashiach. Anybody who says that is a little anti-Semitic. Do you believe he, he will come? Not only he'll come, we deserve that he should come. Okay. And it's time for him to come. Yeah. So what's the problem? So what? So there's a difference if you say, I don't deserve, or you say, I'm not ready. Even if I deserve, I have to be ready. If Mashiach comes and I'm not ready, it's a balagan. So, of course, I'm, I'm, I deserve. Jews deserve. After everything we've been through, boy, do we deserve. Now people seeing you and listening, and they're asking themselves, what is the meaning to be ready? What should I do? What should I do? Yeah. So, logically, sensibly, what does it take to be ready for Mashiach? Hmm. I am also, if you ask me, I think we need to pray more. We've prayed for all of our history. So maybe it's not enough. That means we don't deserve. We deserve. No, really, it's, it's terrible, terrible, terrible. Not nice to say that we don't deserve. It's, 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 it's wicked, vicious. Mm -hmm. we don't, after everything, we still don't deserve? We deserve a hundred times over, but we're not ready. What will it take to be ready? So let's just talk about Eretz Yisrael. To be ready means 
are you ready to become the center of attention for the whole world and teach the whole world how to behave? Or do you just want to be left alone? If Moshiach comes, we're going to have to teach the world. You ready for that? Yeah, you deserve Moshiach. Can you handle it? I don't think. Can you handle the truth? Can you handle the truth? <laughs> because, Seinfeld. Because that's what uh, the coming of Mashiach means. The whole world is a big classroom with students. We are the teachers. If we are not teaching, the class is a balaga, chaos, wild, probably violent. You leave a class without a teacher, there's going to be violence. When the teacher is there, he brings order. That's called tikkun olam. Tikkun is the opposite of kilkul. Tohu. Tohu. So we are the teachers of the world, and for a long part of our history, the students don't want to hear. And Jewish people, will, you'll say that you are annoying them with such a vision. Why don't they want to hear? Because they have all the answers. They know. They don't need a teacher. Now the world is saying, oh, we need a teacher. Hmm. Everybody, the whole world is saying it. Except for a few crazies. Yeah. A few fanatics. Yeah. But the world is saying, we have no teacher, we have no leader, we have no, no manhig. Oh. Nobody likes their president. Oh. Nobody trusts their king. Nobody. So now the world is so ready to be a classroom with a teacher, and they're not finding the teacher. But they have a suspicion. The whole world, it's probably the Jews. Mm. And that's why they keep looking to Israel. What's going on? What's going on? You have the answer. Yes, we do. Just don't tell us what the answer is. <laughs> Of course, we're going to bring peace to the world. Don't tell us how. Students don't tell teachers what to teach. But they're right. We have to be the teachers. We cannot handle ourselves. How we can handle all the world? Mm. If a teacher doesn't have confidence, they'll eat them up. Mm -hmm. So before we are ready to be the teachers of the world, we need to regain our confidence. That's what is missing. Confidence in Bore Olam no, or in... in yourself. When you're abused for 2,000 years, yeah. you lose your confidence. Well, the world's going to listen to me. If I tell them that the Torah says that this is how you should behave, they'll listen to me. They never listen to me. Well, now they're listening but you lost your confidence. No. So, if you believe that you are the chosen people, then you could be the teacher. If you don't think you're the chosen people, you can't. If you're not sure that Eretz Yisrael is Eretz HaKodesh, and that Mitzion Teitzei Torah, then you can't be a teacher. You deserve But you can't. If you don't think your jokes are funny, then you can't be a comedian. You deserve. <laughs> you're a very nice guy, but... If you're, you're not funny. If you're not funny. If you're afraid to tell a joke, yeah, you can't so. be a comedian. So this is what we need. We need to tell the world, it's all true. Yes. We are the center of attention, like a teacher in a classroom. 
And what are we supposed to teach? We'll tell you what is right and good and godly. You don't tell us. But right now we're acting as if we are the students and they are the teacher. I think in this particular time, after they bring us so much evil, if we're going to say that we are the teacher, the fire will be stronger. That's the fear that we have. It's so normal. Yes. After what we've gone through. Yeah. It's very understandable, but it's not true. It's like it's understandable that you have complexes because you had trauma and because you had problems. It's all understandable. But you can't survive it? That's not true. You can still accomplish a great deal. Because what you have is real. Well, it, this, this is the ultimate damage. Get up in front of the UN and say, listen, people, we are the Jewish people. We are the B'nai Avraham Yitzhak Yaakov, Sara Rivka Rachel Valea. That's why we're Jewish and that's why the land belongs to us. And that's why we know what is right and how to do things right and what God wants from his world. You don't know what God wants from this world. All you know is how to scare people. In politics and religion, you scare people. That's all you can do. All you can do is threaten. Because you don't know the answers. We know the answer. We were at Har Sinai. We heard God. We know what he wants. We know what he said. You want to know? Sit down quietly and I'll teach you. They'll love it. They're desperate for it. And if you tell them the truth, you win. So some people say, well, we think it's true, but they're not. You don't even believe in truth anymore? You don't think truth is powerful? Then you've lost the game. No. <laughs> You're giving up everything. Without giving names, we've got some teachers. Everyone can be a teacher. Just a little confidence. Mm. Say, say, yes, I am a Jew. I am the chosen people. I, I, didn't, I didn't choose. I was cho chosen. So it's done. Not an opinion. So... Either, either run and hide and make believe you're not chosen, which nobody believes anyway. Right? They all know we're chosen. But they're a little confused because we don't admit to being chosen. So what are you trying to fool the world? What are we up to? They become suspicious. If you talk truth, people listen. If you don't believe that, then you have lost everything. Mm -hmm. you don't believe in truth then what do you believe that whoever tells a better lie wins then you're part of the olam hasheke let's talk about the 7th of October can we allow me Allow me start by asking why for God's sake it's happened. And please, if there's no certain answer, I rather stay with I don't know the answer for the same reason that I'd never received a satisfactory answer about the Holocaust. Okay? So if to be more specific, can you tell me? Why are we, Am Israel, going through these horrors if he chose us? If he 
want us so close to him. למה אנחנו עוברים כאלה צרות קשות? אם אתה בחרת בנו, אם אתה כל כך אוהב אותנו, למה? I hate to be so Jewish as to answer your question with a question. <laughs> But I, want, I need to ask you a question. What you're asking is very painful. I know. And very real. My question is, why is everybody dancing? Since October 7th, we don't stop dancing. Are we crazy? We want to feel alive. Who else reacts like that to mm. a tragedy that... Okay, so it happened on some Chat Torah when you're supposed to dance. You <laughs> just dance. In other words, you're asking why it happened. I'm asking, how, how did we respond to what happened? With dancing? But either we are very, very holy, or we're completely nuts. Yeah. What is it? We're completely nuts. I think so. <laughs> Maybe a combination. Yeah. We are crazy enough to be holy. There is something bigger than problems. I don't know what it is. But you say, you know, we can't understand the Holocaust. We don't understand... understand Hurban by Yisrisha, Hurban by Yitzhani. We don't understand all this negativity. So how come we're still alive? How much suffering can a people take before they give up? How Collect come it. we're still dancing? Yes. Obviously, there is something more than problems. There's something greater, there's something bigger. And it's an amazing thing. I heard this woman who was a hostage for 55 days. Yeah. Mia? Mia Shem. So, Mia Shem. She's now in Washington. Yeah, so I spent Shabbat with her. Oh, in nice. uh, color in, uh, in Phoenix. I can't believe it. She's, she, what is she made of? She went through the most horrible experience possible. And she just rose above it and is on a different level, on a different plane. On a, what, what do we have? What is it that's going on? I don't know. But it is awesome. It is. Why can't we be that way without the tragedies? Yeah. Why can't we be that way every day? We're bigger. We're above it. We're higher than it. Why can't we talk to the world like a grandfather talks to babies? Because we are the grandfather of the world. Because we are afraid that they will think we are above them. No. And then what? begins. If we're really above them, then they will be impressed and in awe and will want to hear from us. If you're really Zaidi, they want to hear from you. It's a terrible mistake to think that if you have the truth and you are the grandfather, nobody wants to hear from you. Mm. Not true. Not at all. People are begging for a Zaidi. <laughs> Why can't we talk that way? We're older, we're wiser, we know the story, we're, we know where we're coming from, and we know where we're going, and the rest of the world does not. So who's in trouble? We're in trouble. We're not in trouble. We have pain. Yeah. But we're not in trouble. The people who cause pain are in trouble. No? So who do you pity? The Jewish people 
for the enemies of the Jewish people. We will be fine. The rest of the world, I'm not so sure. Hmm. If we keep dancing. If we keep being Jewish. And see, and this, this a, a positive result from this whole tragedy and from the war. Jews became Jewish again. I hope so. Not religious. Jewish. Yeah. Not Chiloni, we're not we're not Haredi, we're not Israeli, we're Jews. This is taking me to my last question. You don't need to be needy. How you, how, explain me the needed and the needy again. Well, it's much better to be needed than to be to needy. To be needy. Right? Yeah. Why? Because that's the truth. We were not created with needs. We were created out of a need. Okay, so I saw your lectures. I listen to them more than once, and I understand that you you tell me, Eric, you don't need God, God needs you. I'm a little bit confused. About which half? <laughs> that you don't need or that he does need? Why does he need me? Mm. If all the time I need him, it's making me confused. What does you, you need from me? You make me man, I need to eat, I need to drink, I need all sorts of things. How can you need me? What do you need from me? Oh. That's a very different question. Yeah. If a woman says to her husband, I need you, what does she need? Money? I know the answer, so. And if a man says to his wife, I need you, what does he need? What is he saying? Why do you need me? Grow up. <laughs> What does it mean, I need you? Attentions? Are you lonely? You're insecure? What do you need? No, I need you. I know that my, my, my wife needs attentions all the time. Right. But that's not what she needs you for. She needs to eat, and she needs money, and she needs attention. That's not what she needs a husband for. What does she need you for? Is it true if the wife says, I need you? Does she really mean you or she means the money, the house, the car? Oh, that's a good question. Oh. <laughs> See, that, that's the biggest part of my marriage counseling. Mm -hmm. Do you want each other or you just want stuff? What do we need from each other? What do we need from each other? We need each other, not from each other. What does it mean? It means that a man without a woman or a woman without a man oh, That's a good song. Is not, is not enough. To be a complete human being, you have to be a man and a woman mm -hmm. united. Mm -hmm. That's what. What do I need from you? 
Whatever I need, I can buy it. So we're actually saying, God need me to be complete? Yeah. So he wake up one morning, he said, okay, I've got it all, but I need something. Someone. Someone. I've got it all, but uh, I'm not satisfied. Yes. And what's missing? Eric? <laughs> yes. That is the best answer. If I am perfect, but I want you in my life, what am I missing? You. Everything else I have. So, what does Hashem want? The Atem Tihiyu Li. I'm giving you the Torah so that you can be with me. I have a very odd question now. If he wasn't satisfied, and to be satisfied, he said, I will create man and the woman. Why didn't create another God? Something that will not make such a problem, such a mess in all this world. What you're asking is, would you like to be married to another one of you? No, please. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's, that's a great. Answer. That he needs us is a terrible mystery. But yeah. that's what makes it so yeah. awesome. Of course. He needs me? Yes. And I can't get over it. Yeah. I, I... But every marriage should be that way. Mm. <laughs> right? Every wife should think, he needs me. That's what I'm hearing for 24 years. <laughs> you have a very good marriage. Yeah. Yeah, you know, if a wife says, hey, you need me, uh, something's not, mm. she's not happy. Mm. But if he can't believe that she married him, and she can't believe that he married her, they've got a very good marriage. So yeah, I can't believe that he needs me. But he does, and that is awesome. Because it's awesome. That is awesome. That's why if do et Hashem besimcha, if you're doing it for him, you're not the needy one. You're doing what he needs, then you can be besimcha. Mm -hmm. As soon as you start being the needy one, you have no simcha. If I need, I'm depressed. <laughs> if I together. will do what he needs, I will be in simcha. Mm -hmm. Because I'm not needy. He needs. Yeah. And I'm doing for him. Yeah. When you're helping others, you, you are in school, of course. Of course. That's 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 how we were created. I but, love the example that you give about the doctors. Like in the corona period. They are going from bed to bed. They are not uh nidbakim bamachalot. They are not eating, they are not sleeping. They got their elf, and they are happy. Because they're needed. Yeah. Yeah. Problem is that as soon as the, uh, the pandemic is over, yeah. they're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a lot, there's a lot of illness in the world. Yeah. But that's true. When you really feel needed, you're Superman. Yeah. You don't have to eat, you don't have to sleep, you don't have to uh, go on vacation and recover. In a normal time, a psychiatrist has to go on vacation every two months, or he'll go crazy. <clears throat> There's a great story that once uh, Rabbi Grossman from Israel told me that he once visited Baba Sali. Rabbi Israel Abu Chatzera. He used to make tzomot from Sunday till Saturday. And when Erev Shabbat came and all his visitors were sitting, he used 
to pour the arucha for them with a lot of simcha. And everybody was shocked. He is not thirsty, he is not angry, and he is happy. Yeah. So he was a tzaddik, he was like more closer than us, maybe. And how did it show? He didn't feel needy yeah. and loved being needed. Mm -hmm. It's so simple. So the simcha came naturally. This is the mysterious thing, okay? You are happy and you don't know from where it comes. Because we're so misled. We are told by all the experts, the only way to be happy is to have all your needs mm -hmm. filled. Yeah, the opposite. Yeah. Rabbi Menis, I want to thank you for this interview. And um, I'm going two days from now back from Israel. Do you want to say something yeah. to Am Israel? No, I want to say something to you. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm from Am Israel. <laughs> I was looking forward to our conversation because I heard you're a comedian. Yeah. And you didn't tell me a single joke. <laughs> you know, when you ask a comedian to tell a joke. No, it's like it's like asking a doctor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh thank you very much. I'm I will say it in Hebrew. Ani nirgash meod liot po. Ani samach meod shabati ledaber itcha. ואני מקווה שגם הצופים שלנו והמאזינים שלנו יוכלו לשמוע קצת יותר מהדברי חוכמה של הרב מניס, שאני בטוח שמגיעים מתוך התניא, נכון? רוב, all of your lectures, all of your Torah is... Yeah, from the Rebbe. From the Rebbe. Who you visited. Yeah. Yeah. אני מציע לכולם לבקר את הרבה. תודה רבה. <laughs>